Now, Boko Haram continues to strike in Nigeria. The group was blamed for an attack in Potiskam, northeastern Nigeria, one week ago when a suicide bomber attacked a religious procession, killing more than 2,000 people. The group is also suspected su suicide bombing attack secondary school Monday in Yobi State, killing more than 48 people, mostly students. Joining us in the studio for more perspective on the subject is Emmanuel Ogebe, international human rights lawyer and expert in bilateral U.S.-Nigerian relations. Mr. Ogebe, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much, Lenoir. Thank you for joining us. Listen, first of all, let me have your reaction to yesterday's attack in Potiskam Secondary School. Well, that is the first bombing of a secondary school by Boko Haram. Their bombings have generally been res reserved for churches, the United Nations, MPF. Uh, the last time they attacked in Yobe in February, they actually killed about the same number of students by, by slitting their throats. So to actually put a, a bomb in a school and blow them up is horrendous. It's a new law for Boko Haram. So what does it tell us? Are they getting bolder? What, what do they want? What is the message here? Well, if we must be very candid with ourselves. Boko Haram is much worse today than it was ever in its history. As we're speaking, Boko Haram is in control of about 30 cities in northern Nigeria. Uh, in the past 10 days, it's captured uh, the largest city, the second largest city in uh, Adama State, which is uh, Mubi, and which is the home of the chief of defense staff. Mm. If you have a terrorist group that has captured the hometown yes, of the chief right. of defense staff, that tells you that things are really bad. So the militant group seems to be successful in its quest to kill and kidnap. Why do you think so? Well, I have to say that sadly, um, we're not getting as much help as we would expect. Despite the international Despite outcry. all of that, uh, the Nigerian ambassador yesterday lashed out at the U.S. saying, hey, listen, you're not helping us as much as you should. But the blame also goes to some of the African countries. Uh, South Africa, for example, has confiscated funds that the Nigerian military sent to South Africa to acquire weapons. This is the same South Africa that Nigeria provided weapons to during the anti-apartheid war. Hmm. So we need to see more cooperation. And then we mustn't forget what happened with Chad. The president of Chad uh, misled Nigeria to negotiate with a phantom Boko Haram, and that allowed Boko Haram to make some of the successes that it did. So we all need to come together and face this terror group. Very serious allegations there. So basically what you're saying is African countries are not doing enough. There's not enough solidarity. There's not enough solidarity. And we must remember what is happening in Nigeria now is exactly what happened in northern Mali. Mm -hmm. This a bunch of terrorists overthrew the town of Gao, which was the largest city in northern Mali. And it was so terrifying that the, the France sent in troops, Ended. other African countries sent in troops, including Chad, Nigeria, and uh, a few others, yes. and rolled them back. When you have a city like Mubi fall, that's a time when you need to have, if the French could come in, they should come in, but we know they won't because they don't have the historical colonial yes, ties indeed. with Nigeria. Yes. But this is a time when African forces, AU, ECOWAS, we should all come in and isolate these guys. So we, we're going to get ready to wrap up. But before you go, I really want, want you to talk about the girls. I mean, where are they? Where do we go from here? They're married off. They're, they're, some of them died. What is the situation? Yes, uh, I mean, and this is really very tragic. Uh, Boko Haram has announced that they've been married off. And that is code word for, for you know, mass rape. They try to cloak it in, you know, religious terms. But no, that, this is essentially what they've done. And from the information we have, some of them uh, have, have died in the process. Mm -hmm. um, we don't even know if one of them was not used uh, as a suicide bomber on an attack in a school uh, some time ago. Uh, so uh, that is what is happening with the girls. A few of them who have escaped, we've been fortunate to be able to assist them uh, with scholarships yeah. to be able to go back into school. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what everyone should be able to do. We, everyone can play a role to redeem the situation. A solidarity indeed mm. is important. Yes, it is. Mr. Ogebe, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Lenoir. And that was Emmanuel Ogebe. He is an international human rights lawyer and expert on bilateral U.S.-Nigerian relations.